Hello, I'm Vivet and today I show you how to run the brand new ARC2 eCustom Farmer on your version 3.36. We will of course run this as a bubble, because this is cur currently the most convenient way to run anything at all. And we only need two things to download. Actually we just need one, but I'm including the second one too, because I think it's far superior and it makes the experience with the eCustom Farmer way better. So we are downloading this 138 menu L4 and like I did Farmer 3.36 Arc 2 bubble. Then we have this download folder, this folder with the save games and my folder which contains all the previous stuff I've showed you in the previous videos like fake np, sign np, the start.files, umd generator, packed viewer and so on. So if you have not seen my previous videos do this because I'm not explaining everything five times. If you don't understand something watch the previous long videos because in these videos I'm explaining it very very detailed. Okay what do we have to do? At first we open this zip file, then we have an arc2 bubble and an arc folder. It's also recommended to read the readme file, but I already did this so I don't have to. Let's see. This arc2 folder contains various files, for example this eboot.pbp, the arc file, k.bin and so on. Then we open the 138 menu folder click in 138 menu, click in arc and in there we have three files alter.png, data138 and vboot.pbp. We extract these files then we copy these files into the arc folder then we delete the eboot.pbp file and rename the vboot file into eboot. Okay, the arc folder is now done, we're done with the arc folder and now we can move it to our other save games so it will appear I think at the very top and once again it contains arc, hbin, kbin, securebin, alter.png or at least in this case and so on whatever for, example, for, for, for some reason it has copied it but not moved whatever and then we still have this arc2.iso file we will move this into our folder where sunp and fakeNP is in there and then we will do the very same we did with the VHBL ISO. So in my case I'm once again using UNO. I copy its eboot.pbp, rename it into uno.pbp, keep shift pressed, right click and open the Windows CMD. Then I will type fake underscore np minus b uno.pbp arc2.iso Yes, eboot.pbp, and that's it. If I'm too fast, feel free to rewind the video or pause it. I'm just plowing through this video because if you watched the previous videos and tested some, some of these things yourself, you will see it's pretty easy to do, so you can do it pretty fast. And then I will use my usual folder, this SS folder, and put the eboot.pbp in here. If we now check this eboot.pbp, you can see it has PSP emulator as icon, and the parameters of O is currently UNO and NPH0020, whatever. This is currently the ARC launcher, and the other ARC files are in this ARC folder. Now we copy our random safe, gate, safe data folder and our ARC folder onto our PS Vita. And then we do the very same we did with VHBL, so we use UNO to launch it. Okay, next thing on the PS Vita, I will transfer the files via Wi-Fi, via the um, content manager. You can also use the USB connection if you prefer USB. But I set up my Wi-Fi CMA connection like a day ago, and I kind of like it. As long as we're using small files, I like it. If you use big files, I would recommend the USB cable. But whatever. Um, we have to copy both safe datas. So the ARC safe data, copying. And we also have to copy the other random safe data, the one in which we put the eboot.pbp, um, which is signed with our base game, in my case it's UNO, and the ARC2 ISO. 
So pretty much you transfer it to saved games and one you can simply ignore because it's done and the other one you have to move a file and rename some folders. Um, on yours you have to start VHBL and then from within the VHBL you start PSP Fighter. But I have PSP Fighter as a standalone bubble so I will just start PSP Fighter well as standalone. In the end it doesn't matter we just need a PSP Fighter which is capable of renaming or yeah, renaming files inside of the slash PSP slash game folder and usually this is not the case but my PSP Fighter is patched that's why I can do this and otherwise you have to run PSP Fighter via the VHBL because the VHBL applies these patches on the fly so as long as you start it via VHBL you have the very same patches okay I rename the UNO folder which is NPH0020 into NPH 0020 ampersand and then I am searching for my transfer folder eboot.pvp let's see it has UNO's name and NPH and so on PSP game L trigger new folder NPH 0020 Okay, should be at the very bottom. Okay, and moving. Now we have these two folders. This is the original Uno game, NPH0020, and the folder is renamed into NPH0020 ampersand. And then we have this computer created file, which is in the NPH0020 folder. After we did this, we used the very same trick to refresh the database, which is remove memory card reboot Vita, insert memory card, reboot Vita. This will once again take like two minutes so you can skip the video if you don't want to wait. Oh, by the way, this cannot start TNV. I know we said we require a kernel exploit to restart uh, to start an eCustom firmware, and Arc2 is an eCustom firmware, and we now have a kernel exploit, a public one. And if you well, if you take one and another one, you would actually get two. But there's still a third factor, which means we can't use TNV on 3.36. Total Noob himself has to update it to version 3.36, and currently he has his reasons not to do because he doesn't have time, and he's the only one who can update it due to him not sharing the sources with us. But that's okay; it's his word, so he doesn't have to share. So whatever. Simple, you can use ARC as e custom farmer or you can use no e custom farmer. TNV only works up to version 3.20. Everything higher is not working. But ARC can also run ISOs, it can run plugins, it can run PS1 games without sound, it can run any homebrew, and it can, of course, run the VHBL, but that's kind of unnecessary since ARC can run homebrews himself or itself or whatever. Okay, let's see. Database nearly done. Oh, I forgot to change my Vita system language from German to English, but whatever. That shouldn't matter. And now we are finished with our job. It's worth to say that this doesn't always work. So, in the perfect example, you would get a gray screen, a white screen, a black screen, and then the e customer starts. If your device freezes, you have to fully reset it. This means keep the power button pressed until you can shut down your device and then you reboot it. That's everything I need, I want to say. But it looks like we're lucky, it's working fine. 
and as you can see this is the 138 menu it's currently still loading okay there we go this is our this is the, the menu which I'm using most of the time the 138 menu as you can see it lists my ISOs if it's a Japanese game it lists game ID if not it lists the name for example here Gen Grand Theft Auto and it also lists the homebrews like PSP Finder and the whole stuff and also important is that Arc also has the same patches as VHBL so you can rename stuff inside of the game folder and so on but for example I'm now starting one of the ISO games to show you I can run ISOs and I think this is far more convenient than the custom bubbles because why would you bother resigning a game you can just launch it as ISO and as you can see Grand Theft Auto running Veer Uno Veer Arc Custom Farmer and in the end you all want to see oops, that this is running on version 3.36 Thanks to QuickRoser for the update of the RPE Custom Farmer and for his public release of Kernel Exploit. This is usually something we do once a year and now we have done it like after 4 months. So be grateful and maybe donate him some bucks via Paypal. He really deserves it. So yeah. Arc 2 running on version 3.36. I'm the Dad and see you soon.